Hey y'all, it's Costa. I help people break the system to build a better future. Today, we're talking about the exploitation and neglect of Casey Kasem, one of the most emotionally draining and depressing parts of working in the long-term care industry is protecting our aging population from neglect and abuse. And I wanted to talk with y'all about Casey Kasem's story because it's a powerful example of elder abuse and the role conservators can play. If you wanna hear the full story, check out Bitter Blood, Kasem versus Kasem. So let's get into it. What happened? As many of you might know, Casey Kasem is an award-winning radio personality and voice actor. Most notably, he was the host and creator of America's Top 40. In 2007, he's diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. And in 2013, Lewy body dementia, a type of dementia that causes changes in sleep, behavior, cognition, movement, and the regulation of unconscious bodily functions. As you know, dementia of any kind is devastating to a person's health and quality of life. Ultimately, it resulted in his need of 24-hour care and monitoring. Some background information on the Kasem family. Casey has three children, two daughters and a son from a previous marriage and was remarried to actress Jean Thompson in 1980. As the disease progresses and Kasem's health is declining, Jean, his wife, is slowly stopping visits from anyone in the Kasem family, including his three children who normally see him every week. Through this process, his three eldest children are eventually completely blocked from seeing Kasem and eventually seek conservatorship of their father, which is denied. According to court records, not only was Jean not allowing anyone to visit Kasem, she would take him to hospitals and facilities for care and basically abandon him. On two different occasions, facilities called Adult Protective Services because Kasem was left in facility care without a personal contact. Now, in the spring of 2014, the Kasem children used the patient's Bill of Rights to see their father in the facility where he's seeking care. Shortly after, Gene removes him from the facility against medical advice. When I say remove, I literally mean she removed him from the nursing home. Medical professionals told Gene, due to the severity of Kasem's dementia, he would not be able to survive without the equipment provided by the medical professionals. Yet she insisted that he leave right then. From May 7th to June 6th, Casey Kasem is a missing person. There's a court-ordered investigation against Gene's attorney who tells the court he is no longer in the United States. On June 6th, Kasem is reportedly in critical condition in a hospital in Washington state. At the time, a court orders separate visitation time for the Kasem children and his first wife, but unfortunately, it's too little, too late. Kasem's body is no longer responding to artificial nutrition, and per his end-of-life wishes, he's taken off life support. The immediate cause of death was reported as sepsis caused by an ulcerated bed sore, likely caused by the unnecessary removal from facility-based care. In November 2015, three of Kasem's children and his brother sue Gene for wrongful death. The lawsuit charges Gene Kasem with elder abuse and inflicting emotional distress on the children by restricting access before his death. In 2018, a police investigation prompted by investigators working for Gene found that he had received appropriate medical care while in Washington and that there was no evidence pointing to homicide. The suits were settled in 2019. Elder abuse and neglect can take many different forms and sadly is rarely resolved in a way that brings justice to its victims. If you know anyone who is experiencing abuse or neglect, I encourage you to contact Adult Protective Services or the National Center on Elder Abuse. Know your rights and know the rights of your loved ones.